Lobster baby. Red alert, lobster season just opened. Got an eight hour drive ahead. Let's get down there. First stop, lobster report card. Check. All right, we made it. It's about six o'clock right now. And I think the sun sets at like 6.45, maybe closer to seven, I'm not exactly sure. But I want to get out there before the sun sets so I can drop my pots as my, or drop my nets as the sun is setting. And I'll explain more when we get out there. I don't have anything set up yet. I brought all the gear, but it's not ready to go. So I need to hustle a little bit. Well, just kind of packed everything in. I don't really know if I'm forgetting anything or not. Hopefully I got enough to go and go get some lobster. I got the important things. I got my lobster report card. I got my lobster gauge. I got the hoop nets. I got bait. I don't know, probably forgetting something, but we'll just send it out there. You can see the sun's already coming down. Lights getting low. Lobsters are out there waiting. There's like some kind of event going on here. So there's a lot of commotion. There's a ton of police right here, everyone's fishing right here. Um, we're gonna head to a little bit different spot where hopefully there's a little less people. But anyways, a lot of commotion out here today. There's like a concert going on over there. I should turn this off. There we go. So a lot of people think that uh, first crawl is, is the best time to catch lobster, which Maybe it's true, I don't know. I don't think I have enough experience to say one way or the other, but for me personally, um, I've had just as good a luck you know, in the middle of the evening as well. So, um, yeah, anyways, we're hiding down now. We've got to set everything up so it's ready to go once we get out there. We're gonna drop our nets here. We finally got one together. It's taken me a while to get everything set up, which is kind of frustrating, but I'm just gonna drop one in here. Make sure to drop a waypoint for 170. Down. So just like crab fishing, we're gonna drop this down nice and slow so that hoop drops down to the bottom, nice and flat. We don't want it to be dropping on its side or upside down or anything like that. So we're gonna drop down nice and slow. There. All right, it's on the bottom. Then we got our buoy here. We got a couple of glow sticks. This is probably not ideal, but um, that's what we're working with for now. So anyways, there's one down. Ball jumbled up but at least we're fishing now i'm gonna work on getting i got four hoop nets so i gotta set them all up and drop them all down and uh yeah we gotta get to it the lobsters are waiting number two going down i saw a sea lion over here hope they're not gonna steal my bait if you can only hope at this point what's awesome about this kayak is i can just sit on spot lock can just sit right on top of that hoop net. It's gonna come in clutch when we're actually bringing them up and I'll show you guys that later. But anyway, two down. I probably won't film the next two, but I'm gonna go drop the next two. Maybe I'll move a little bit down, down a little bit here just to kind of spread out and diversify. Um, should I mark this spot here? Well, you're actually limited to five hoop nets per person. So I could drop a fifth one, but I only have four nets and I think four nets is already a lot to manage and carry on the kayak. Uh, yeah, so. So anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and drop the last two and uh, hopefully we'll get some lobster. All right, well, got all my pots down and it's been about 20, maybe even more minutes since I dropped my first one. So this one very well could have lobsters in it already. This is the first one that I dropped down. So here we go. Oh, actually, first things first, throw on the gloves. I'll show you why we need these in a little bit. First, lobster pull of the season. Oh. Right there. Okay. Want to lock it? Okay, as much on top of the pot as we can. And then all at once, we're just going to go for it. Go. pots are a little bit farther away from the jetty because I showed up a little bit late today. I didn't get my prime real estate right up along the jetty. So these ones out here might take a little while to get lobster in them. Maybe they'll take a little bit longer for the lobster to get out of the jetty because most of them are in the jetty during the day and then well, all of them are in the jetty during the day and then at night they all come out and start feeding. So slowly but surely they'll make their way out farther and farther. And hopefully the bees will get hit next. But nothing on that round. Let's try the other one, why not? 
So I talked to another kayaker as I was dropping my last pie and he said he's already got four keepers. So this, the lobster are definitely out here. I just gotta wait for them to find my stuff, I guess. But we'll see, maybe this one will have some lobster. Maybe that first one was just in a bad spot. All right, let's go for it. There's one in there. That's, I think that's a keeper. First one and I think it's a keeper. All right, let's take it out. We're gonna put this right back down. Make sure it's fishing. Now let's measure this guy. Pretty sure this is a keeper. Nice male, California, spiny lobster right there. And this is why we have the gloves. Look at those, all those points right there, all up and down the back of the carapace and then also underneath the tail right there gnarly spikes right there. I don't know if you guys can see them. But anyways, let's measure them. It's been a while since I uh, caught a lobster, so make sure my eye is correct. Because if it's not, then we gotta toss them back. Just trying to get me with that tail. To measure these guys, it's the same, very, very similar to measuring crab. Back home in the Bay Area, we have Dungeness crab and we have a crab gauge. Well, for lobster, we have a lobster gauge. It's just a little bit of a different size, so for crab back home, Dungeness crab, the minimum size measure across the carapace is five and three quarter inches in the Bay Area. I mean, it's always subject to change, but for now that's how long it is. But for lobster, it's three and one quarter inch. So that's what this gauge right here is measuring across the back here. This is three and a quarter inches. And we're measuring this first um, part of the shell. I don't know if it's called a carapace or not on a lobster, but anyways, there's like, as they go down the tail, there's different sections of the shell. But we're just measuring this first one with the head. And so you stick that front of the gauge in between those two big horns right on the top, and then see if it reaches back over the back of the shell. No, that one's an easy keeper. Easy keeper. It's hard to see, but that's the edge of the shell, the top of the carapace, that first section of the, of the uh, shell. And that doesn't reach over the edge. So that's keeper right there. So if you've watched my previous lobster videos, like I've gone the past two openers. The first year was really good. We caught a ton of lobster. And in the second season, last season when I came back, we caught, we didn't catch very many to be honest. And a lot of them were shorts. We hardly caught any keepers. So a lot of times with lobster fishing, at least in my experience at this location, a lot of shaker or a lot of shorts basically. Um, and then you mix in a few keepers here and there. But forget one and have it be a keeper already. I think it's a good sign of things to come. Got those huge antennae. And yeah, these lobsters, these are California spiny lobsters. The only species of lobster that we have in California, I believe. Um, no claws like the lobster over on the East Coast, Atlantic Ocean. And you can hear they have that little vibration in there. That vibration is actually a defense mechanism. So if something were to grab it, like a sea otter or a, I don't know, what else eats these? big fish I guess maybe like a black sea bass they have that little buzzer in there and that's supposed to kind of defend themselves I guess it kind of scares the, the predator away hopefully in their case but unfortunately for him the buzzing does nothing for me and he's going in the ice chest so in total the California the limit for these California spiny lobster is seven per person per day um, so obviously this is our first one he's doing that little buzzing there it's sensing danger but yeah, anyways, this is our first one. Hopefully we get six more. We can call it an evening, but one in the box. There's one in there. I think that one's a short though. We'll measure them anyways, just to show you guys, but this is definitely a short. Oh, there it just fell out. All right. All right, how about you? Yeah. You guys got any keepers? Nice. Nice. All right, so I think I got a little excited being that I got that one keeper right away and I didn't let these soak enough. So I'm gonna make sure to let give these the full soak. We'll let it sit for a good, at least 20 minutes and then we'll go cycle through all four again. And hopefully we have a little bit, I mean, one is still good, but we're looking for a little bit better number. So anyways go take a break maybe I'll take a little 20 minute nap here really quickly I'd like to take a break from today's video to thank the sponsor of this video which is factor 
Now, if you live a fisherman's lifestyle like mine, you know, you're always busy running around, and the last thing you want to think about is what you're going to have for dinner. And Factor is here to fix that. They're here to support you with fast, tasty meals that fit your lifestyle. And Factor is committed to supporting wholesome eating made simple. They offer a variety of different meals with a rotating menu of 25 plus meal options, as well as Factor Plus add-ons. One of my favorites is this tropical fruit punch that you see here. It's not only nutritious, but also delicious. Choose your favorite meals or let Factor craft your order based on your taste preferences and meal history. So if you're interested in letting Factor help you out with your busy lifestyle, head to go.factor75.com slash dieheartfishing60 and use code dieheartfishing60 to get 60% off your first box. Again, check the link in the description or head to go dot factor 75.com slash diehardfishing60 and use code diehardfishing60 to get 60% off your first box. Thank you again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Now, we'll see you back out on the kayak. Here we go, second round. lobster in there. There's three lobster. I think one's too short. The other two have a chance. I think one's a keeper for sure. So like I said, I've been here the last two years and one year was really good and the other year was kind of a little bit disappointing, I guess. Fishing was just tough. Um, but it's looking like this is more similar to the first year that I came. So anyways, just wanted to show you guys. So this is definitely a short. Um, the only reason I kept it is so I could show you guys just what I'm talking about on the on the gauge. So like I said, this is the gauge. When we put it over the right in between the horns there, the edge goes the edge of the gauge goes way over the last or the first uh, carapace. So that's like probably half an inch too short. Definitely short. But anyways, we'll let him go. Okay, these other two are pretty close. I'm not sure if they're keepers or not, but. Pretty close. Not quite as big as the first one, but yeah, that's keeper. One in the box. This other one I think is even bigger. Oh, I almost dropped it. Yeah, another keeper. Boom. That's a nice keeper right there. Two keepers in that pot, so that brings us to three total. Things are looking good. Goes nothing. We want to pull up fast because that hoop net doesn't have a lid on it. So if there's any slack, those lobster could swim right up the top. There's three more in there. One, two. So here's how you can tell the difference between males and females. This one's a female, this one's a male. I don't know if you noticed already, but if you just look at these little flaps on the bottom here, they're bigger on the females. So this one has the bigger flaps, this one's smaller, so that's a male. And the females have these bigger flaps because they keep the eggs underneath there. This one, no, there's no eggs in there right now. But they can carry up to, I think, over half a million eggs when they're breeding. Sea lion right here. And in California, you can keep male or female as long as they're of minimum size, there's no restrictions as far as uh, male or female goes, but this one obviously too small, so we'll let this one go. Hold on, hold on. Ouch. Man, they're good at getting you with the, that tail. Oh, it's so close, but not quite. Short. Let's see this one. This is the biggest one in that pot. I think this is probably gonna be a keeper. The other one was so close. Yep, keeper. That's four total. We are doing well. That's already more than I caught last time. Uh, I think these are too short. That yeah, one already dropped out. It's about to fall out too. Oh man. 
just got one of my ropes tangled up in my motor and that was no fun. Couldn't see anything. It took me like 20 minutes to get it all unraveled, but we got it out. Unfortunately, no keepers in those two uh, hoops. So I might have to move those closer to my other two because the other two have been producing. Those both got me two keepers each. If I don't get any on those two on the next round, I'm definitely gonna move them if we're not done yet. But um, yeah, anyways, huge hassle. Don't get the ropes tangled in your motor if you can avoid it. But things are looking good. It's actually calming down a little bit. When I first got out here, there was a little bit of a breeze, but now pretty calm. I mean, there's a little bit of a swell, maybe a foot or two, but nothing really to be worried about. And uh, yeah, just a nice evening out here on the lobster grounds. Got four in the box, hoping for three more. And then after that, we're gonna take a nap. Got a lot of fishing to do on this trip. So, you know, if we can get a limit and get out of here and get some rest, we will take it. But yeah, it's been a full like half an hour since we first pulled up that first one. So I think it's time for us to go back around and see if there's any more in there. Nothing. one keeper in there. This looks like a small one. Yeah, I'm not even going to measure that one. This one I think is a keeper though. So it looks like a keeper. And that's because it's a keeper. That tail has so much meat in there. This is just pure muscle. Which is why it hurts when they're slapping you with those like claws right there almost. Horns, whatever you want to call it. But Anyways, a lot of good meat in there. Very good table fare. Right, that's number five. All right, I think we need to move those other two over to this spot. There's some getting way more action over here. So let's go get those other two. Maybe there'll be a, a lobster in there, maybe not. But uh, anyways, yeah, I think we gotta move here. This is more fishy or more lobstery over here. One close measure might be a keeper. This is keeper number six. I watch my feet. You guys are flopping around. Uh, one second thought he's not looking that big. So close. He is very close, but not quite. It reaches just over the edge. This is like even touching when I reach over the edge, but I don't think it's, it's too close to call that. The fine for keeping an undersized lobster, I don't know exactly. I think it's like a thousand bucks or something. So definitely not worth it. Even if it's, you know, even if you're like 98% sure that it's a keeper, not enough, it's gotta be a hundred. Yeah, not quite, we'll let this one go. One. Oh, this guy's missing an antenna. Someone broke it off at some point. I don't know if it's a predator or a person, but small one. Oh, that guy. So one quick note on the safety side of things, because we're on a kayak, you know, out here in the middle of the ocean, totally dark. You know, obviously it's tough to see, and it's tough to see for other people, including other boats. So it's super important that if you're gonna come out here, you have lights on you. And lucky for me, well, I guess conveniently for me, when I'm filming, I probably have the brightest lights out of anyone out here. But um, yeah, just super important to stay safe when you're out here. Obviously, if you can, come with a buddy. It's always safer to kayak with a buddy. So in an ideal world, you have one light facing forward and one light facing backward, or a 360 light if you have one. That way, in any direction, if a boat's coming or a kayak's coming, they'll be able to see that light. But with that being said, it's been about another 30 minutes or so, so let's go check, see if we can get any more lobster here. Hey, how's it going? Good. <laughs> Getting anything? Yeah, we got a few. I think I got some earlier, but the uh, sea lion could take it. Oh no. Yeah. That's a bummer. But I'm still here. Are 
the keepers or do we throw them back? That is the question. These are close though. Oh, it's so close, but not quite. There's like little hairs that come off of the back of the shell and it's hitting the hairs, but it's going over the shell. Fortunately, this one probably in another, one more molt this is when these lobsters molt. They lose their whole shell and they grew a new one. Um, so whenever this lobster molts next, it's probably gonna be a keeper. So tread lightly, my friend. Six, we're one away. with a good one. <laughs> ah, look at that guy. Here, we'll just measure just for fun of it. You can see the carapace right there. This doesn't even come close. That's a easy by like another quarter of an inch. Ouch! You stabbed me with that. Those, those horns right there. Got me. Just for that, I'm gonna eat him. Yeah, that's the limit right there. Awesome. It actually didn't take us that long. It's 10.30 right now, so, I mean, it, it did take us a good amount of time. We probably started at about seven. I probably dropped my first drop at like seven, so it took us about three and a half hours. But um, yeah, we did it. That's the, that's the limit right there. Well, like I was saying, we got a lot of fishing to do on this trip, so not a bummer that we're done early. Gotta go pack up clean up all our stuff it's gonna take me another hour or so at least um, and then hopefully we get some rest so we can be ready for the next leg of our adventure there's our precious lobsters it's our limit but anyways yeah we made it back here it's about 11 o'clock right now maybe 11 30 now um, took us a little while but we got our limit First leg of the journey, awesome, great success. Nice little limit to start off the journey. Now we gotta go find some ice. And I think that's the main thing right now. We gotta get some ice for these lobster. So we're roughing it a little bit tonight. I got an Airbnb for the next two nights, but not tonight. So tonight's gonna be a little bit of a familiar sleeping arrangement for me, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, first things first, we gotta clean up and we gotta get some ice. Well, thank you, Ralphs. Thanks for the ice. Tomorrow, we're gonna get back out there and do it again. Uh, but first, we're gonna camp out in the Corolla tonight, get a little bit of rest, and then we got some things to take care of in the morning before we get out fishing. But first things first, let's get some rest. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. Slept all right. Probably about 67 hours worth. Ugh. So today we have a few things we need to do. First thing we need to do is we need to get some lights for our buoys to do a lobstering tonight. So yesterday I had some stuff I made, made do with what I had, but it wasn't the best. I need to do that. I need to make a little bit of a drive. I need to check into the Airbnb that I'm gonna be staying in for the next couple of days. And then um, we're gonna hit the lobster grounds again tonight. So yeah, that's what we got on the list for today. I'm not really in a rush because we can't check in until three anyways um but nevertheless let's get moving make a quick stop for an acai bowl here uh, to get a large makai bowl all right just stopped at the pet store and i picked up some lights i'm gonna try this out so these are like little lights you put on the collar of a dog when you're walking at night and I'm hoping that these are gonna be bright enough where they're at least a little bit brighter than those glow sticks. They're waterproof and hopefully they're gonna light up so that other boats other kayaks can see my buoys. So 
I think that concludes all the chores that we have. Next step, we're gonna go check into the Airbnb. <sighs> we made it. All right, quick stop. Took a quick nap, so I'm rested and ready to go for lobster fishing. I'm gonna go grab a quick bite to eat, and uh, we'll see you guys at the harbor. All right, well, we're getting out here a little bit later. We were doing well, we are right on schedule, hoping to get out here when it was still a little bit more light than it is now. But unfortunately, I had some motor issues. Uh, this little outlet right here, and it was giving me some trouble before even I came on this trip. So I was a little concerned that this might happen. But uh, anyways, it happened. I was able to get it to work now, so we're headed out to the spot. We still got some light out here, so it's not a total lost cause. Definitely still capable of getting some lobster tonight. But just a little concerning that that thing is like going in and out. So hopefully it's good for today. And who knows what that's gonna mean moving forward with the rest of this trip. But anyways, for now, we're okay. We're working, the boat is working, everything's working. And we're headed out. The theme for today is just kind of doing some exploring. So yesterday I went to a well-known spot where I've caught lobster before. And I knew there was gonna be lobster there. I didn't know there was gonna be that many keepers, but uh, you know, I kind of had a good idea where, where I was going. Today is going to be a little more exploring. I've fished this area one time before, but very limited uh, experience. And this area that I'm fishing is definitely more expansive. There's more area to cover here. So uh, I'm going to do a little more exploring today, tonight, and uh, see if I can find a new little honey hole. I think I'm going to start off in a spot where I'm pretty sure there's going to be some other people out there. But uh, we're going to try it out, see how it goes, and uh, we'll we'll uh, go from there. So one thing I didn't talk about last night when I was doing this lobster fishing is you need a lobster report card to do this lobstering um, over here in California. So um, in addition to your normal sport fishing license, there's another little, I don't know if they call it a stamp or report card or whatever, and an extra little, I think it's $10 fee you have to pay to come target lobsters. And every time you're gonna go target lobsters, whether it be diving for them or hoop netting, you have to first mark on there that you are in fact lobster fishing. And I'm not really sure exactly why they make you do that ahead of time, but maybe just to keep track of who's fishing in case, you know, there's a question of who's nets or who's or whatever, I'm not really sure. But anyways, yeah, you mark the date, the location that you're fishing, and the type of fishing, whether you're doing diving, scuba diving, or hoop netting or whatever it is. So yeah, you have to do that before you get out and go fishing. And then there's also a step you need to do before you go in. So I'll talk more about that at the end of tonight. I talked to one of the game wardens or DFG that was checking people as they were coming in. And he said they, they wrote out four tickets last night uh, for lobster fishermen. So very important to know what you're doing. Those are not cheap finds either. I'm pretty sure they're upwards of a thousand dollars if not more. Uh, so very, very important to know what you're doing if you're gonna try doing some lobster fishing. But if you know what you're doing, you did some research, then very rewarding as well as like you saw last night. So hopefully we can replicate that today. I think today we're not as much going for numbers. We're just kind of exploring, hoping to find something and kind of seeing what happens along the way. So we'll see how it goes today. Cross your fingers. All right, first one go in. Number two. Now we wait. Alright, uh, this is my first pull here. In about 25 minutes, I think, since I dropped it down. The lights that I got this time are definitely a lot better than the previous time. Good for me and for other boaters. That they don't run them over and they don't accidentally drop their pots right next to mine. Their nets. Same pots. Nets. Got a glove up. catch so far. What? Not even really sure what kind of crab this is, but it's interesting. It's got like the, the back legs are like fins almost. No skunk. <laughs> so the one thing with this spot is there's a ton of divers all over the place. I don't 
not a huge fan of that. I just feel like they're going to be scaring the lobster all night. They're not going to have time to come out and feed on my stuff. But they've been saying that they're seeing them down there. And they're starting to move right now. So I'm going to let it go one more time. And then if we don't get any on this next round, then I'm going to pick up and move. First round, epic fail. While I wait, watch a Fisherman's Life video. Eat my dinner. Yeah, see, so the bait in here is not even, like I could tell, nothing's even chomping at it, so I don't think this is a good spot. Just dropped all four in a new spot here. Hopefully there's some better action here. Although I do see some divers going past right here right now, so. <sighs> divers. But like I said before, this is more of an exploratory mission. I mean, I, I could have gone back to the same place where I went last night and I probably could have got another limit. Or at least would have got some lobster, but I feel like it was more exciting and, and more uh, interesting to go try a new spot. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Those divers, there's two divers talking to each other. The guy said there's a lot of lobsters down there. But anyways, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I feel like I'm not gonna expand my knowledge or my skill set of lobster fishing if I do the same thing every night. So let's try something new. And if I don't catch anything, at least I'm learning something. So anyways, we just put them down. We'll wait another 30 minutes. It's 8.42 p.m. right now. So we'll go till 9. We'll just go to 9.12, exactly 30 minutes, and then we'll pick them up again. Oh! Well, there was, there was two in there, but they both fell out because they were small. Oh, there's a lobster in there. Here we go. Not a keeper, I don't think, but we caught a lobster. I caught my first lobster of the evening. There it is right there. Definitely not a keeper. I'll just measure him just to show you guys. Just like last night, we're measuring this first little section of the uh, shell here, the carapace, and obviously that goes way underneath that's the end right there it's like a, probably a quarter of an inch short so nice little lobster but probably not gonna be a keeper till probably next year maybe even the year after that little female all right it's back That one's close. Nope, not quite. Maybe an eighth of an inch. Definitely next year's lobster. But hey, at least we're catching a few now. light just went out but I got a couple lobster here that looks pretty good that might this one's pretty close I don't know maybe keeper maybe just barely short honestly a lot of times when you get them and they're close it's usually because someone else caught them and they were just short but let's see oh keeper that's a keeper right there let me just double check aha that's a keeper just barely but it hits nonetheless. Gotta triple check these because this one's pretty close, but it is a keeper. This has been a tough night. Today's an exploratory, or tonight's an exploratory mission, but hey, paid off. Got a, one keeper. I think we're about to get checked here. Hey, how are you? Doing? Good, how about you? Luck? I got one keeper, a few shorts. Yeah. Yeah. There's the card. 
Okay, thanks. Can you push off? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, it's super important to know what you're doing out here. Make sure you're doing everything legally and correctly. Because these lobster finds, you know, you should always know what you're doing. But especially for lobster, the double, triple, quadruple check. I really think the divers kind of mess things up. Every time there's someone diving nearby. There's some big splashes. There's three of them in there. I'm not sure that they're keepers. They look kind of small, but check them out. And short. Short. All right, it's getting better. So the first few, uh, probably the first two hours, three hours, I probably didn't catch, I don't think I caught any lobster, maybe one or two small ones. But now I'm starting to consistently get, you know, one or two probably average per pot, which is not terrible. I only have one keeper, but um, it's definitely better than what we started at. So maybe with this change of tide, the tide just switched. So maybe that's starting to get those lobsters out feeding and definitely the, absence of divers i think is benefiting me as well so um yeah fingers crossed i'm gonna stick at it for maybe another at least one more round maybe two more rounds if i'm feeling extra energetic but um yeah you know what i'm gonna stick around for two more rounds we'll give it two more rounds so half an hour soak we'll pull them up drop them back down and that's the end of my bait so i'll just drop down all the bait i have left and then let it soak one more time and then that'll be it so We'll see, fingers crossed. Hope for, let's let's try for one more keeper. I think two keepers is not a terrible night. I mean, it's obviously not as good as it was last night, but not every night can be limit. So I think two keepers would be good. So let's try for that. And uh, yeah, anything more than that will be a bonus. Feels heavy, I think there's something in there. in there we'll measure maybe this one oh yeah that one looks pretty good we'll measure that one all right oh no just barely too short 30 more minutes and then we'll give it our final shot oh all right it is now 12 27 a.m have crossed into the next morning, I guess you could say. I don't, uh, I see one boat out there. Uh, one more boat there. Yeah, there's a couple people still out here, but pretty much everyone's gave up already. So this is gonna be my last round here. We're gonna pull all our pots one more time. If there's a keeper in there, great. If not, then, you know, it was a nice little exploratory mission, but I'm still holding my hopes up that I can get one more in these last four pulls here, so. Wish me luck. Definitely too small one I'm gonna measure. Yeah, that's small. This one, that's small. Man, so tempting to drop it back down, but I think that's a keeper. I'm gonna measure that one. Pretty sure this is a keeper. This looks bigger than that first one I got. All right, let's see if it's actually a keeper or if I'm just getting tired and losing my sense of, my senses. Good hold on them. Please, 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 yes. Keeper, keeper baby. Keeper number two. Let's see how these 
other ones do. This one, nothing. Oh, that feels heavy. I think there's some in there. Oh, I think there's some lobster in there. Oh, yeah. Jumpers. That might be a keeper. That might be a keeper. I think that is a keeper. That looks like a keeper. Definitely too small. All right, let's check this one. It definitely looks like a keeper. Look at him flare out that tail. This one's like kind of beat up. I don't know if it's from just how things go in life, but that's been tearing up that tail. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. That's a keeper. Three keepers, baby. This one's got barnacles on the back. I know I see that sometimes with the Dungeness crab back home. I don't know if that has any bearing on the quality of lobster or not, but keeper's a keeper. That's number three. All right, we're all cleaned up. We're headed in now. That's gonna include the lobster fishing. We definitely did some exploring tonight. I explored some spots that were good and some spots that were totally empty. So I'm happy I made the decision to come to this new place, even though I think the numbers would've been better had we ventured back to the same place where we went last night, but I'm here for an adventure. I'm not here to just catch lobsters. So anyways, that's gonna be it for tonight. We'll wrap it up and hit the hay as soon as possible, get as much rest as I can. All right, that was a much needed rest. So today, no fishing. We gotta do some rebuilding and some scouting, I think. So I don't really want to go out with the current state of the motor, but if I have to, I will. But hopefully I can try and fix things up so that it's a little more secure. I mean, worst case scenario is I go out tomorrow and then it just doesn't work and I just won't be able to fish, I guess. But I'd like to get one more day of actual fishing in. I'm gonna to try to catch some yellowtail or maybe some bonita or whatever we can find out there. Possibilities are kind of endless here because the water is so warm. You never know what could swim through. But anyways, today I gotta to find that part for my kayak. That's the goal. I just hit two places, well, three places. One was a little bakery, got this little cinnamon roll and a muffin. But I hit two shops that I thought probably had my best chance of getting that little part and they didn't have it so kind of as I suspected that's a kind of a unique part and I should have brought an extra lesson learned next time I go on a big trip like this with my kayak I got to bring a few extra parts that's kind of what I'm learning here look at that cinnamon roll that looks good so here's the deal I won't know if I can get it to work until I get out there tomorrow morning because the more I mess with it the more it basically the more broken it gets. So I don't want to touch it until I get out there tomorrow morning. So tomorrow I'm going to get everything ready to go. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to surf launch, and then I'm going to try to get it to work. If it works, great. We're going to go fishing. If not, I'm probably just going to have to call it and uh, come back in and I guess that'll be the end of our trip. So fingers crossed I can get it to work tomorrow morning, but no promises. We're just kind of at the mercy of this little plug. It's funny how the whole the whole thing is coming down to one little piece of metal. Just went to go check the surf launch. Looks like nobody went out today, or if they did, they're already back home. It's a little bit windy, so I think that's probably what chasing people off. So no intel. Going in blind tomorrow morning. We'll see how it goes. All right, well, spent the last little while doing a few chores, so let me show you what I've done. First, I'll show you the fishing rods. Got my rods ready to go for tomorrow. These are my two main rods that I'm gonna be using. I got one spooled up, it's got 65 pound braid with a 40 pound fluoro top shot, and then this one has 40 pound braid with a 30 pound fluoro top shot. So the plan is to go catch some live bait in the morning and then hopefully troll the live bait, one on a dropper loop on this rod, and then this one just gonna be fly line on the surface. That brings me to another point. Anytime I'm on a long trip like this, anything more than probably a couple of days, I like to bring my vacuum sealer with me, especially if I'm on a trip like this where I'm kind of going to catch fish to bring home, um, or lobster, I guess, to bring home. But yeah, so I bring this vacuum sealer with me so I can seal them up. That way when I get home, it's nice and easy. I just pop them out of my ice chest and throw them right into the freezer. 
But anyways, that's pretty much it for today. We tried to get that plug, and I'm still not sure if it's gonna work in the morning when we get out there, but if it does, which I'm hoping it will, where all systems go, it's all kind of leaning on that. So I'll see you guys in the morning, bright and early. We're gonna get up, hopefully before sunrise, and get out there, and hopefully put in a full day looking for some nice pelagic fish. Good morning, everyone. A little bit of a late start this morning. It's already a little bit light out. I was hoping to get out be on the water probably by this time, but that's okay. So it goes. All right, let's go time. Let's go get him. All right, we made it out. This is the moment of truth. If we hear a beep, that means that the motor is connected. If we don't, then that means we're gonna have to try and figure it out. And we're gonna have to try and figure it out. Yes. Oh, we are in business. You guys hear that beep? That means I think it's good. I just hopefully, we're gonna not touch it and hope it just stays good. So first things first, we're gonna go try and catch some bait. So for bait, we're looking for live sardines or live mackerel, preferably mackerel, just because I can keep them alive a little bit easier than the sardines. But uh, yeah, I brought these live bait tanks, which I showed you recently. I got two of them today. So I'm hoping to put, I think, three mackerel in each tank. I got two of them, so it'll be six live mackerel. And I wish I could get more, but I think that's all I can get safely. You know, that's gonna stay alive all day. So, a little bit of a run. We gotta run this way for about a mile to get to where the bait is. And then we're gonna have to go another, at least a mile, maybe two miles that way to get to where the fish are. But now that we have a motor, no sweat for me. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, guys. I'm feeling really good. Okay, well, things are a little bit sketchy. The motor's kind of going on and off, which is not great, but at least it's working now. And worst case scenario is I'm going to have to paddle back in. I won't go too far out today. And secondly, my fish finder is not working at this moment. So I'm going to try to figure that out. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to get some bait. I'm gonna try to jig up a few mackerel, maybe sardine or two. Preferably mackerel, just because they stay alive a little bit easier. And then we're gonna head out and start fishing. But anyways, a little bit of a run here, following the birds. You can see some birds diving up here, so there's gotta be some bait around. Fingers crossed. We're running, we're running on fumes here. dozen sardines. Didn't find any mackerel, but maybe we'll find some when we're out there at the fishing ground. I want to get to fishing. So, we're going to head out, hit the Yellowtail Bonito grounds. They'll definitely eat a sardine, so as long as I can keep these baits alive, we got a shot. to go back on it's feeling like the cord feels kind of warm which is not good I feel like that's probably means something's not good down there I don't really want to ruin the motor but yeah that's kind of where we're at right now it's not connecting yep it's not working. All right, we're gonna paddle around for a little bit. If we catch one, it's gonna be a miracle. But miracles do happen sometimes. That's why you always bring a paddle back up. Got it. 
Let him take it. Let him take it. Got something. You're running sideways right now. I don't know if it's big or not. Oh, it's, I think it's a bonito. Yeah, bonito. We got one. Well, it's not a big bonito, but it's a bonito nonetheless. I know it's just a little guy, but when you have no motor, no fish finder, we'll take what we can get. We get a nice couple, couple nice fillets out of that one. Took that live sardine on the fly line, right on the surface, and yeah, there's a the little bonito. Hopefully there's some bigger ones around, but if not, I'll be happy with what I got. All right, we're gonna bleed him really quick here. Make sure that meat stays nice and good. And then we'll get our line back in there. All right, bonito. It's not a big one, I know it's small, but it's a bonito. Okay, so all I'm doing here is, like I said, I'm on the paddle, which is not ideal, but just doing a slow troll. And I have that fly line back on my left side here, and then I have my dropper loop on the right side here. And I put this fly line back, I don't know, maybe 50 yards, something like that. And then I have this dropper loop probably, you know, 20 to 30 feet off the bottom, something like that. If my motor was working properly, I'd take the run out a little bit farther, but since it's just me on the paddle today, I'm probably just gonna stay in close here. And who knows what we could find. There could be yellowtail in here, there could be more bonito. There really could be anything. I mean, this water is probably around 70 degrees, if not warmer. And all the pelagic fish can be found out here. Oh, flying fish. Paddle over there. Chasing it. Chasing it. There's something. I don't think this is a bonito, whatever, or a yellowtail, whatever it is, it's very slow moving. I feel like this could be like a calico bass or something. Got him. Yep, calico bass. This might be close to keeper, but uh, we're not gonna keep any of these today. Calico bass, yeah, we don't have these back in the Bay Area, so it's cool to catch something a little bit different, but we'll let them go. Look at this. Thought for a second it was fish, but sea lions having a good time out there. Oh, yeah. Got it. Something's got it. Word. Got it. Yeah, I got him. I got him. Oh, it's a bonito. A bonito. All right, that's what we're looking for right there. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Oh, all right. Well, that was our last bait right there. So. That's what we're going to end on right there. Nice little Southern California Bonito. Still fairly small you know, by Bonito standards, but we'll get a couple of nice fillets on that one. This one's got some teeth marks on it. It's been hit by something. But anyways, that's the fish we're going to end on right there. That's the last bait we had in the box. So on this note, we're going to start heading in. We got some teeth. I'm gonna stick my finger in there and take the hook out, but I think I better not do that. Well, I know a lot of people, especially down in SoCal, will frown on the Bonito, but I actually really like these guys. A little bit of sashimi to go with our 
lobster tails. It's always a fun trip down to SoCal. I've been here for the last three lobster openers now, usually coming with a crew of people, but this year everyone was busy, so I decided to just send it and go on my own. So this is a fun little solo trip. Let me know what you guys' thoughts were. I actually originally planned to just do three separate videos, but then when I was on the drive down here, I don't know what happened. I just got some inspiration and decided, let's make one long, more like a movie style video where you know, we encompass all three styles of fishing. But anyways, thank you again for watching. Can't thank you guys enough. This was a fun trip. Let me know what you guys' thoughts were. Do you like this? Should I come back here again? Once my motor's fixed, once my fish finder's fixed, or should I try somewhere new? Let me know down in the comments. But anyways, thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Let's head back north.